another beer review. We're doing a little midday lunch uh, beer review. Um, I really wanted to get this beer reviewed and out of the way because uh, of what it is. And I'm sure in, in the description you'll figure out uh, what it is. But, you know, uh, as of right now, I'm pumping out a lot of content. I do pre-record these. Sometimes I will uh, drop these videos um, right then and there. As soon as I drop them, sometimes I'll uh, drop the reviews later on whenever I just need to fill in some some time. And uh, But this one will be dropped pretty uh pretty soon as soon as I get done recording and, and uh, uh, cutting down the film but um yeah we're doing Sierra Nevada uh, celebration it's the 2019 vintage and that's pretty important because this is a fresh hop IPA and like I said I want to get this uh, reviewed and and done with because it's a fresh hop IPA um, I do uh, I have been sitting this in my fridge for a little bit I haven't cellared it obviously um, and I noticed, uh, this is my second recording, but I noticed on the back here it says it was packaged on 11 and then the numbers 2030 are right next to that. I don't know what that means. Um, I, I don't know what the package date means either. Maybe that's for the models. Surely this wasn't packaged three years ago um, with it being a Fresh Hop IPA. Um, we'll just disregard that anyways. Um, so yeah, Sierra Nevada Celebration IPA, Fresh Hop IPA. Uh, I read something that, um, the night crew, they'll stay up past midnight and, and the trucks full of all the hops will come in and they're literally like truckloads of hops. And there's even a cute little picture. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, there's a there's a cute little video um, you can see on the website, and you can you can see uh, I don't know if that was made just for a picture, but you can see like employees literally making hop snowmen. So I mean, it's just truckloads of hops. And I didn't watch that video. I kind of regret that I hadn't watched the video prior to this. Maybe I could have spit out some more information for you guys. Um, but they did first brew this in 1981. So uh, I know previously to this, I reviewed Stone IPA, and uh, I kind of alluded to maybe this was the first uh, nationally produced and canned and sold uh, IPA, um, the Stone IPA anyways. And here on the website, it says that they first brewed uh, Celebration in 1981. So this is one of their first beers because I think Sierra Nevada came out in 1980 or 1981. And I'd also like to correct another previous video. Uh, I think it was in that Stone IPA video as well. I think uh, I suggested that Sierra Nevada came around in the 90s and that is that's totally wrong. Sierra Nevada, I think, is even older than Boston Beer Company. So there's that. Uh, got the information correct now uh, as far as that goes. If, if if Sierra Nevada started before 80 or 81, please put that in the comments. I, I just, I'm a stickler for having correct information. Um, but anyways, one of the first American IPAs, to my knowledge, I've never heard of an IPA uh, in modern craft beer that was brewed earlier than 1981. Uh, but now there is, um, oh goodness, the New Albion Pale Ale. So it's not an India Pale Ale, but New Albion Pale Ale is one of two beers that is kind of heralded as the original craft beer, um, modern craft beer anyways. And uh, so yeah, Pale Ales have been around you know, as far as modern time goes for, for a while. But th this is a treat. This will be one of the original IPAs to my knowledge. Um, definitely muddy, a lot of sediment, not dust-like particular matter. There's there's sediment in here for sure. Uh, they definitely didn't filter out these hops. I don't know what else goes in here. I didn't look up taster notes or ingredient malt bills or I do know Centennial, Chinook, and Cascade. Just looked at my notes. <laughs> but uh, Centennial, Cascade, and Chinook are in here. 
Uh, I don't know what else they use. Oh, they use two row malt and uh, it just says two row pale caramelized malts. So there's that. Um, it's definitely a hazy beer. It's not meant to be a hazy IPA, but I definitely can't see anything through it. Uh, I would say in the sunlight, it is like a caramel amber color. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to lean more towards like a, like a mahogany red with like yellow, yellowish highlights around, around the glass, but the highlighting is, is not, uh, prevalent. Yeah, just a dark red. It almost looks like redwood. I, I really like the color. It, it, it looks like California. And where, you know, and I would imagine redwoods maybe are around um, California. You know, I, I don't know. I just really like the way this beer looks. Um, I appreciate that they don't filter out all the hops. And uh, it just kind of reminds me of like California and redwoods and, and, and this time of year. Um, it has a milky, creamy foam. There's not a lot of... There's not a lot of bubbles going on, but it, it hasn't dissipated very much. It's just like a thin white film almost. It looks very milky and creamy um, on, on top of the beer. And it does leave some lacing uh, on the beer as well. You can see that as I spin my glass around. Surprisingly enough, the malt does come through that caramel, too pale malt. Caramel two pale, caramel two row malt. Yeah, and I think uh, this has been in my fridge for a little bit. I'm going to probably have to give this one a fair shake video and drink one of these as soon as they hit the shelves. Uh, I'm not getting a lot of hop aroma in this, and with this being a fresh hop IPA, I'm pretty let down with that. Here, I, I washed my hands, so maybe the soap's interfering. I get a little bit of ro a roastiness, so that caramelized malt, um, two, the two row, um, just a tinge of roastiness. Obviously, they didn't uh, roast the, the crap out of this and make a stout. Yeah, I, I don't really get a lot of hop aroma, and I'm pretty pretty sad. I think the age on this kind of destroyed the aroma. Uh, I could be wrong, though. If this is a malt Ford beer, please put it in uh, the description if you, uh, if you know more about this beer than I do. Okay, so now that I've tasted the beer... Maybe I can smell what I'm tasting. I know it sounds a little weird, but I'm going to go in for, to the aroma one more time. Yeah, I get a little bit of malt, uh, malt bitterness, a little bit of hop bitterness now that I've tasted it and I kind of have it registered on my brain what to look for. But again, just not a prevalent hop aroma, and I'm, I'm kind of sad about that. You know, it's a fresh hop aroma or fresh hop beer, so I, I would want a lively uh, hop aroma in this beer. It would mean Sierra Nevada, they, they're really good about using uh, hops for aromatics, in my opinion. Uh, I think that's what makes Sierra Nevada a special brewery. And um, yeah, I'm not getting it in the aroma. However, on the palate, It's a really well-balanced beer, and I mean right down the middle. Not like a little more malt than a little more hop. I mean, it's just right down the middle. Um, caramel, two-row pale malt. And then that the Chinook Centennial and um, Cascade hops. 
just split right down the middle, divided up evenly, I think. Um, it's a really good IPA. Um, uh, now, the hops are giving off a lot of earthiness, so it's definitely not like a citrus or even piney. It, it gives off more of a, a grassy, earthy palate. And then that rich caramel, kind uh, kind of bready, kind uh, kind of roasty, kind of bready malt, uh, just coming together and making this a superbly balanced beer. This is fantastic. Um, now I'm not as far as the flavor, the flavor profile. Um, I'm not. I don't get terribly excited about earthy hops and, and more of the bitter stuff. This this is more. Uh, the hops are more bittering than they are sweet. So there's that. And if you, if you're not into like a terribly bitter beer. Maybe you want to develop your palate a little bit more. I mean, this isn't an Imperial IPA by any means, but I feel like uh, if you're not used to IPAs, maybe this beer would be really bitter for you. I believe it's in the 60 IBU range. It's, it had it listed on the website. Uh, 60, yeah, 65 bittering units. Um, and then it's also a 6.8% ABV beer so it's not terribly sessionable but it's not um i mean it just doesn't have to be a one-off treat beer as well you can definitely sit back and have a couple and, and have a nice uh easy drinking day um that hot bitterness is lingering i haven't had a sip in a while and that hot bitterness is, is there it's not terribly powerful now i'm getting pretty used to ipas and I get kind of scared of that lupulin threshold where I, I'm wanting more and more bitter beers and then stuff that I used to think was really bitter is really light. Uh, I know probably five years ago this would have been one of the worst beers in the world for me. <laughs> um, even three years ago, two years ago, uh, probably wouldn't, I mean, I didn't look at Celebration as a beer. Uh, worth trying. I just wasn't into IPAs. So I I'm, am I'm, I'm kind of scared of the looping wind threshold and how I can uh, taste bitterness. But overall, a, well, a perfectly well-balanced beer. Um, if you're an IPA lover, I suggest this to you all day. I think it has plenty of bitterness uh, for an IPA lover. Um... I think for somebody trying to step into IPAs, I think maybe this is a good IPA to maybe put into your rotation for IPAs to consider. Um, if you if you're into like deep, rich, malty, caramel stuff, maybe if you can handle hops, maybe you would enjoy this as well. Um, I just I think this beer really just for an IPA just goes right down the middle with the flavor profile and they balance it really well um, I'm not crazy about the flavor profile though I'm not big on just uh, tons of caramel in my malt and I'm not big on the earthy hops so that's where I kind of set back the score and I'm not bragging on it too much um, but I still I still have to praise uh, how they balance the, the flavors out Anyways, it's, it's just blowing me away how it's so evenly balanced. Uh, I even have a coworker who called it the best IPA he's ever had, and I wouldn't argue with him. I would not try to correct him on this. Uh, it's a really good beer. I would...
Yeah, I think since like the technicalities of this beer and, and when I think about the brewing process that it probably took and, and the malt bill and the recipe and, like in the engineering and, and, and the science behind the beer, that's where I really like this beer. And so I'm going to give it a four out of a five. I'm kind of leaning towards 4.25, almost into a solid A range. Uh, but then when I actually taste the beer, and, and I'm just thinking about what I'm tasting, and I'm not thinking about what it what went into the process, uh, it kind of sets it back for me. Just again, earthy hops, caramel malt. Not not the biggest fan in the world. So four out of five, I think it's an I think it's a really good IPA. I think um, most IPA lovers, if they if you haven't tried Celebration already, it's a nationally renowned IPA. Uh, I recommend it to you. I get you some Celebration for this holiday season. Until then, until next time, guys. Cheers.